one, uh, sorry, two loops still holding everything together. So that's why I say it's a uh, triple redundancy. Interlocking everything means, and then backing it with adhesive, that means you can lose one segment for some reason and it still is not going to come apart. This is as strong a and perm as permanent a sewing technique as I could hope for. Don't worry about the tapes. We'll get to that in just a, a minute. You see it's just simply looping under or over. Uh, and then, of course, always back in. I'm not... I'm paying more attention to describing this than to the actual work in normal circumstances. I do this automatically, and you will come to that very shortly, too, that point, where it's all automatic. You put a good movie on, and other than uh, checking for uh, double, triple checking for the right signature, the pagination, etc., the order of things as you proceed, other than that, this becomes second nature. Do you go over or under? It really doesn't matter. Just be consistent. For aesthetic reasons, when this is done, uh, whatever uh, technique you use, just be consistent and you'll wind up with a very pretty sewing pattern. Nobody will ever see it, but it'll be smooth and flat, as flat as can be, etc. All right, now we've just finished two signatures. This is kind of important. Line up the two top edges as best you can. You want that right on the button. Pull it's always straight. If you pull any thread against the fold, you're going to run the risk of tearing. There's no reason to do that. You want to establish tension all along the way. The best way is to pull in line with the signature. You're watching this um, uh, this uh, connecting loop at the very bottom. When that is snug, that's enough. Then pull the other one and just make sure there's no excess slack here and that's fine. If you pull too hard, you're going to buckle the paper and that's going to create too much tension and distort your finished spine. So you want it tense, but not so tight that it's uh, puckering the paper. Now, all we need to do, I'm going to, hmm, normally I just put this, at this point, I just put it between my legs and do this. I may have to do that off camera because this just isn't working. I apologize about that. Make a simple double loop knot. That's a simple knot. Um, A simple knot looped over twice. Uh, that's always what I do. I mean, it just makes for a, a tighter grip. There's one. You probably can't see this anyhow. And there's two. All right. There's there's one. Pull it up snug. Again, double check your upper edge for alignment, pull it up snug, and do it again. The old thing about square knots and granny knots, I don't care. At this point, this is going to be encased in, in uh, adhesive, and it's not going to be a big deal. Normally, just put these between your knees, double knot, uh, each one double looped. Uh, and that's good to go. Now, that's not going to come apart. You've already established tension on the first two signatures. Now you can proceed with the tedious work of one signature after the other until you run out of thread. And we will cover that in just a moment. How to 
quickest and easiest, well, in my opinion, it's all in my opinion, quickest and easiest way of joining the next piece of thread. Here we go. You've already looped over. You're not interested in the first signature anymore. The only thing you're interested in is the second signature. You need to get between the signatures, so I simply take my needle and find the spot, move the needle over so it comes up underneath the previous crisscross. I'm only interested in this signature, so the loop is coming out of the middle signature, and that's the one I want to catch, and that's all I want to catch. That may be very difficult to see, but when you see the finished product, it will all hopefully make more sense. So out, straight forward, in. Again, I am only interested in this loop right there. It may look complicated, it may look very fussy, but trust me, you do it after you sew your first book, it's not that big a deal anymore. The entire process of book binding is just a long series of very straightforward procedures. The trick is to learn all the procedures and then practice. You need speed, if you, certainly if you're going to do it for a living. And you also need to maintain certain standards, of course, for quality. You are your own quality control inspector. Now, we've just done three. Oh, at the, when I came out at the last time, I'm sorry, I should have pointed out, you then interlock. You go through the first, the, the previous two signatures. You go over the connecting loop and draw it through, thereby, again, tying it, literally putting a, a virtually a, a small knot in. It helps maintain the tension of what you previ previously done but it also is one more redundant uh, safety precaution. You are tying in top and bottom every signature as you go along, uh, one to another, to another, to another. That, in addition to the tape and the cross uh, hatching of the tape loops, this is going to be an extremely strong sewing. That's why, once I learned this technique, everyone talks about various sewing styles. I don't understand. If you're doing this for a living and want the strongest type for your customer, the, the most, the longest lived, the relatively quickest and easiest way of Putting a book together again, why you would do anything but this technique, I don't know. I don't want to get into arguments. If you know a better way, fine. This is what I have always done and will continue to do. Now, again, if you can see this first loop right here, when the tapes go in, which is going to come very shortly. Uh, you'll probably be able to see better, although it's white on white. Uh, you'll probably be able to see how you can catch the loop. And I am using my fingers to open the signature. It's difficult enough to go through the outside of a fold, so you want all the help you can get. There you go. It also helped that, uh, and we are disregarding that center hole right, where is it, right there. We don't need that. That's not involved in uh, the tape. So we go in between, find that loop, pop out under it, and back 
in, back out. At this point, again, align everything. Watch down here this connecting loop. That's all you're interested in. Take your thread, pull it, uh, pull the slack out of it until it tightens up. There's your tension. Now, take your needle, go through the previous two between them, under the connecting kettle stitch, draw it in, boom. Now, we have shown earlier. We have already cut our tapes. We now have the beginning of a text block. If you tried to introduce your tapes at the very beginning, it's a nightmare. Also, you may wonder why I'm not using a sewing frame. I actually forgot the name of it. because I've got uh, three of them, uh, but I never use them. I used to, and then I realized, uh, at least with smaller books, they take too much time. I do this for a living, so time is money. They take too much time to set up and are too limiting in actually, and space also. Uh, and they're just generally too limiting. I can do a much faster job uh, this way without a, just using my bare hands. So at any rate, uh, now you have some substance. You have an actual beginnings of a text block. So one was bigger than the other, or wider, so it's this one. I take my needle and very carefully go under every single loop of thread. And then I move it back and forth just to make sure I haven't missed any. Now, using that, and since there is some rigidity to the tape, I insinuate the tape underneath. And if your needle has caught every loop, then uh, the uh, doing it this way, the tape is going to uh, not miss any loops either. There you go. I hope you can all see that. That's It's as straightforward as that. Now, because we're working with just holding this with our hands, uh, I found it much more convenient to have the excess back and periodically just draw, leave about, you know, an inch uh, free and clear for your needle to get around in and out. Uh, but you don't need the all the flapping, uh, all the excess up here. Better, I think, uh, to have the excess down there. At any rate, we'll do the second one. Again, top or bottom entry, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you get every single... I know this is difficult for you to see. We have the camera zoomed in, but probably not zoomed in that close. At any rate, there is... Get this excess out of there. There is the uh, loops. Here is the tape. Insinuate, just work it in. And I have cut these tapes slightly sm uh, uh, narrower than the gap between the holes. Uh, if you cut it right on the button, or God forbid, a little too tight, uh, you're going to have a real problem doing this, doing this uh, procedure. Also, as you sew along, you want some clearance between the, en the edge of the tape and your hole. Otherwise, you're going to be constantly uh, catching the tape itself with your needle point, and that's, that's just, there's no reason for that. That just uh, slows things down. All right. There are your two tapes. Now we will proceed. You'll see how it gets a little easier with tapes. Again, as I take a signature out, I just eyeball the signature mark. We're up to G already. Fingers inside, opening that signature. All of this sounds very complex, I know. It'll all be second nature. 
just do your first book, then do your second, and suddenly you'll be dozing off in the middle of sewing. It'll be so straightforward and mindless work. There are, again, exceptions. There are books that are so complicated, the pagination, etc., that uh, you have to keep your wits about you. But generally, this is what I call a Joe job. Frankly, this is what I put uh, Clint Eastwood movie on and have it going in the background keep me from falling asleep. All right, done, aligned. Tension, watch that loop. That's tight through the last two signatures, out, not, done, on to the next. Now we're just going to proceed, add infinitum, uh, we have 35, maybe 40 signatures left, take an hour, an hour and a half, you're going to meet us back here and we'll be ready to back this. One last thing to show you. We now have run out of thread. It's going to happen periodically. Take a convenient length of thread. Cut. I like to take the time. See how that's twisted, twisting up? There's natural twist to it. Take your fingernail again. Just lightly. Don't put a lot of pressure on it. Just lightly. You'll feel the twist come out of it. And you'll also see it go a little laxer. It makes the sewing process so much easier. You really don't want to get, if you wind up with a very twisty thread, some polyesters are notorious uh, for that. Uh, if you wind up with a very twisty thread, it might be uh, appropriate to just uh, let it go and try another type of thread. Twistiness can really mess you up. Here's quick and easy. A fisherman showed me how to tie a broken line to new line. I've never forgotten it. It's the quickest and easiest way I know of to join two pieces of string. Again, this isn't going to, I've never had one come apart ever. This isn't going to be under a lot of stress. It's going to be either inside the book uh, safely tucked away in the fold or on the outside encased in uh, polyvinyl uh, acetate adhesive so nothing is actually ever going to ha uh, happen to this. All you're after right now is a secure join uh, while you actually sew the book and something that you can do 20 times during the course of sewing a book and it's not going to eat up the clock. Make a simple double loop thread. See, there's a single loop, very straightforward. Do it one more time, through. That's all there is to it. Come on. Like so. Draw it together. Make sure it's all drawn together. That's it. That's It's as simple as that. Take your scissors, make sure you're cutting off the loose ends, otherwise you start all over, and boom. I leave a little. I don't cut it right at the knot, of course. And that's it. I've never had one come loose, never had one, uh, never had a problem with any aspect of this. And it's so fast. Again, you do it a few times, and uh, it's a matter of seconds to put on a new piece of thread. So, we will continue on. By the way, with a decent size hole, actually, if your thread gets, uh, thread end, new thread end gets tattered, quickest, I've found, quickest and easiest way of threading a needle, as long as you've got a decent eye size, just double it around, make a tiny little loop. Again, I don't know if you can see that. I should have some black here to uh, show it off. And use the loop. 
through. It's got a little more rigidity, and if your uh, end is tatty, because this is multiple uh, ply thread, uh, you don't have all the, the hassle of pulling it through. At any rate, that's probably all you need to know. I'm going to do one more signature real fast just to show you uh, that a new knot in your thread will pose just the tiniest obstacle. Now this knot is only going to affect this next signature given its length. And we can tell right now that it's going to be inside the book, which is fine, doesn't really matter. If you can help it, it's probably better for knots to be on the inside of the book. They do represent tiny little bumps on the spine if they're on the outside. Uh, if they're for example, on the outside uh, loop. Uh, but it's not essential. It more or less all comes out in the wash. So, again, we came out at the top. We go back in at the top. Straight forward, joining. Make sure our uh, hole is exposed. You may have seen me. I just, it was like that. If I tried to come out like this, I would catch the uh, tape and that could complicate things. So you want the hole exposed. Where is it? There you go. And now, I hope you can see this, now the last loop is much more visible. At least the shadow line is. Again, I don't know if the zoom in is tight enough to see that, but it's very visible to me. And with my eyesight, any, if I can see it clearly, anyone can. Make sure you're not tangled here. That's it. It's as simple as that. Now, we've got a knot. Every time it comes to a hole, it's going to catch. Don't force it. Go to the inside of the hole and pull it through. One hole at a time. Yes, it takes a little longer but you only have to do this for just knots. If you try to force it uh, horizontally, uh, it's just not going to work. You're going to tear paper. It's going to be a mess. There's no reason not to treat the knot with some care, like so, and just move along accordingly. The knot will soon be long gone tucked in the page, in the paper, text block, and that's the last time you have to worry about that knot. Just take your time with knots. That's the point of that, I suppose. Now again, very obvious, very clear. There's the last loop. You catch it, and back in. You don't have this problem. I could shorten up on the slack also. When I'm when I'm speed sewing, I usually uh, have very little slack. In other words, I pull the thread out that much, if that, go in the next hole, and keep about that much slack behind me. Then, when I come to the end, then I pull all the slack through, again, using a horizontal uh, uh, motion. Uh, it's quicker and easier, and you saw all the tangles I was getting into. Uh, it avoids almost all of that. So, again, close the signature, align at the top. How is the alignment looking? Not bad. You'll still have a little chance to play a bit with the, in this case, it's a gilt uh, top edge uh, before you uh, bind. Once the text block is all sewn, you should have a little play with just making sure it's all nice and snug and uh, aligned. Uh, at this point, I'm happy enough with that. 
we have some distortion with that first signature but as we mentioned earlier that's going to happen when you when you mess with uh, reinforcement uh, it's all about the uh, minimizing Finally, again, the kettle stitch through. Now, you could make a proper knot and go through like so, or just pull it tight. It doesn't really matter. Again, it's going to be eventually encased in uh, glue during the, uh, the uh, backing process. So, uh, sure, knot it if you want. Do a double loop knot if you want. It doesn't matter. It just takes a little more time. And its I don't think it's that necessary. So, there you have it. The fundamentals. Oh, and you can see. You'll see it much better with the final uh, text block. But you can see the pattern developing. If you are consistent and always go in one way and come out the other, etc., and just develop your own technique, whatever it is, just stay consistent, you'll wind up with a nice, clean pattern like so, although nobody will ever appreciate it except you.